Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson. This is Maker Size. In this episode, I'll be completing the cross slide lead screw as well as the vertical lead screw for the Shaper project. In the previous video, I cast the support brackets for the lead screws and I got started by cutting those off of the casting tree and got started cleaning them up. The lathe isn't quite big enough to machine the ends of the lead screw that I'll be using for the cross slide. And so what I've done is I cut off a short section of the threaded rod that I can thread down into a coupling nut. And then I Loctite that in, put it in the chuck, and I drill a center into this little insert. And the idea there is that because I don't have the ability to cut threads on the lathe and I don't have the right tap to thread a smooth rod with the right threading, I will have to use these coupling nuts to connect the threaded lead screw to the turned ends that will extend through the supports for the lead screw. To turn those pieces from threaded rod, I need to have centers on each end and this seemed to me the best way to go about getting an accurate center. I use a three jaw chuck to hold the coupling nut. Then I indicate it to make sure it's well centered. Then I install the insert with some Loctite with the slotted portion on the inside of the coupling nut. And then I use a center drill to drill a center into this insert. Now these will go on both ends of the uh, threaded rod and then I'll turn down the portion that gets the ball crank and that will be mounted to the automatic feed drive system.
I've got the bracket attached to the cross slide drive block and I need to make sure that I get the full range of travel here. So what I'm going to do is measure from the outside of the cross slide feed block to these coupling nuts and make sure that they're equal. So it looks like I've got about 71 millimeters on either side. And now I want to position the cross slide so that it's in the middle of its range of travel. And that puts it at about 72 millimeters, 140 millimeters, which is in inches, about five and a half inches of travel left and right. My first attempt at directly printing a crank for the cross slide lead screw <laughs> failed pretty dramatically. It broke apart while I was tightening the set screw. <laughs> ben Wilhoit, one of my patrons, uh, suggested that I print one that incorporated a bearing and I'm really happy he made that suggestion because it's turned out to be a pretty good design. I've got to mount the vertical lead screw on this side of the shaper and it consists of three castings. There's a top and a bottom bracket and then a uh, tapped mounting block that attaches to the back of the cross slide support. To be able to drill this hole I had to remove a portion of the mounting brackets for the pinion gear drivetrain in the back of the shaper. So I'll take a piece of threaded rod, cut it to length, and then I'll use a bolt on the top along with a couple washers and a nut. I'm gonna have to sand down the top a little bit more to make clearance for the bolt that I plan on using, but essentially I'm going with hardware that I have on the shelf uh, as opposed to going out and like trying to get a custom length coupling nut. This part that's mounted to the back of the cross slide support is a little bit smaller than the brackets and so what I've done is I've measured this part and then I've taken half that diameter and I've gone back from pretty much the front of uh, this part and drawn a line and then I've drawn a line halfway across the smaller part from the back side, which is pretty well flush. So that's where I'm gonna drill a hole. I'm gonna take it over to the drill press and drill the hole so it's vertical, or at least as best I can make it. I'm going to spot this part using the hole. 
That way the drill bit transfers a mark from this hole to the one immediately below it, which should ensure they're pretty well aligned. Then I'll take this part over to the drill press. I will drill it, and I'll do this all with very small drill bits. And then I'll come back over here, and I will increase the drill bit size a little bit at a time, drilling them both in this configuration. And that way, they're as close as I can get it to uh, aligned vertically. After increasing the drill bits a little bit at a time, I will eventually need to transfer these markings to the bottom to ensure all three pieces are aligned. And for that, I will use one of my longer drill bits, and this is 1964 ths That should get us all the way through and ensure these three holes are pretty well aligned. Then I'll have to enlarge them a little bit more from this to uh, the capping diameter of hole for this block and a through hole for the upper and lower ones. So that first attempt uh, at using the vertical lead screw, <laughs> I didn't leave the Loctite long enough to dry, uh, but now it does seem to work much better. And just to give you a little demo there. This to me seems like a reasonable way to approach it because uh, you're not gonna be using that vertical lead screw nearly as much as the horizontal lead screw. I hope this project inspires you to exercise your inner maker. Thanks for watching.